Good morning everybody, I hope you're all well. My name is Richard and behind me here I have the latest version of the Tesla Model 3 Long Range, the 2022 version in the UK that now comes with a bigger battery. So I'm going to take this for a day out with me, put some miles on it and see exactly what this car can do in the real world. What's this real world range? Obviously the figures quoted on, uh, for example, Tesla's website are rated miles, but what can this car actually do now that it has a larger battery than before? We're about to find out. Okay, so the Tesla Model 3 Long Range has been with us in the UK here since 2019, and it's always had a 75 kilowatt hour battery. In mainland Europe, they received the 82 kilowatt hour battery, but we never had that for the Long Range, only for the performance. However, now we've got the 79 kilowatt hour battery. So we've plugged this in just to double check that. This is uh, from one of the recent batches in the UK. Uh, so most of the 2022 long ranges since about March at least would have had this slightly larger battery. So we've gone from about 75 kilowatt hours of battery to about 79 kilowatt hours of battery which I think this here is the same battery as you get in the Model Y. So when I range tested the Model Y and drove it from 100% to zero, and if you haven't seen what happens when you get to zero, check out our other video. I don't think it will, you know. We had about 75, 76 kilowatt hours of usable capacity, whereas our Model 3 long range that we drove on the same day had about 69 kilowatt hours of usable, although that was a car with kind of year old 20,000 miles in it. This car here is just a few months old with 4,000 miles in it, uh, but we've plugged it in, it shows zero degradation from use. It shows 78.8 kilowatt hours nominal battery and about three and a half kilowatt hours of uh, reserve. So it'd be interesting to see just how much further it goes, that little bit of extra, will it make a difference? And whilst driving it, can I spot any other differences? Is the ride any better than it was before? Is there any other differences to the car? Tesla don't tell you this stuff. Tesla don't tell you uh, about battery size changes. They just make lots of incremental changes all the way through. However, um, so it's good to see we've got that slightly larger capacity because the price of the Model 3 went up considerably. And if you're one of the lucky people that bought these at the old price of about 52,000, they've gone up to 58 or thousand pounds now here in the UK for the dual motor long range and with some wait time as well. However, it's good. We've got one here today. And what I'm gonna do, uh, as usual, I can tie this in with doing other work. So I've got to go to a place called Farnham in Surrey from here in New Milton. And then I'm gonna go on to a place called Hornchurch, which is Essex in sort of East London area. And then back again via Tolworth. So I'm gonna cover probably about 300 miles, which is probably about the range of this car, but we'll find out exactly. So let's get in and have a look. We just finished charging. Um, I had it set to finish charging to 100% and preconditioned for about 10 minutes ago. So it should all be done. Let's go and check out what we've got on the display now. Um, let's just see, we're unplugged. We had this scheduled to finish charging uh, for 8.15, but it's actually, we're faffing around, it's 8.38 now. 358 miles of range. You can see on 100% look, 358 miles of range. And I think the previous uh, Model 3 long range would show about 320 odd miles of range at 100%. Uh, so, yeah, it does promise some more miles. Let's see what it really does. Uh, so, this is not an LFP battery. This is um, the Model 3 standard ranges have LFP, so you charge 100% every day. But this car, normally, it would actually charge to 90% on a daily basis, between 50 and 90%. The cars just don't like sitting at 100% for a long time, but if you're about to use the car for a long journey like we are today, no problem to put it to 100% and just maximize what you can get out of this. And I think to be fair, this is gonna be pretty typical of a day for someone like a sales rep or something. You know, you've got two or three stops, a couple of hundred miles to cover. And so if you're skeptical about an EV, but your sales rep does a few miles every day, then I think this is probably a good video to, for you to watch as well because you see exactly what it's like. Now, every morning, your car can be charged. We charge at home, and you don't have to stop and get fuel first or along the way. You don't have to get fuel and then get your coffee. And if I am charging, I can just get a coffee whilst I'm charging. So um, anyway, we'll need to get going, uh, head off in a few minutes, and then I'll speak to you perhaps once or twice along the way, just see how we're going for the efficiency numbers. What will happen for the next <laughs> couple of hours is I'll just be driving. I'll do a couple of shots just to prove that, but we'll make this real world driving conditions. So driving at the speed limit, not hypermile, not going slowly, not crawling behind buses. We'll be driving at the speed limit, make this a real world test. It's quite a nice warm day today. So it's about 22, 23 degrees Celsius at the moment, and there's no wind or anything like that either, nice and dry. So this should be good for a range. And uh, just for reference, uh, this has still got the standard 18 inch wheels come with the Michelin Pilot Sport 4, T1, 
Uh, what other information do you want? 255-45R18s. And remember, you can actually take these aero covers off and there's a reasonable looking wheel behind there. You can put a hubcap kit on if you want. So if you don't like the aero covers, you can take them off and there's some quite good looking alloys. But the aero covers will give you a little bit of extra efficiency and range. So this is just stock standard, uh, a basic Model 3 long range white with a black interior, all the standard, no other extras. So we're right down here on the south coast, remember, of the UK. So the first stop here is in Farnham in Surrey, not too far away, about 60 miles. First stop in Farnham. So let's just see what we've done for trip so far. Uh, 63 miles, 237, one hour per mile, 15 kilometers. So we've got 79% left. Next stop is going to be around in Essex Way. Uh, what's the name of the place called? I'll look it up. Anyway, hang on. Uh, we're going over here somewhere. Hornchurch, that's the one. We have the Hornchurch outside London. So we go up and around the N25 here by the look of it. Uh, the traffic here is normal. Okay, let's carry on. So it is 11.22 and we've just stopped at Clackett Lane Services for a bit of food and toilet break. So again, normally when you stop and do this kind of thing, you just top up your charge. But this car is proving to have quite some distance to it. 66% of the battery is remaining. So we've used one third. <clears throat> we've already covered 108 miles. So it's definitely a plus 300 mile car, 231 more hours per mile. So yeah, it's proving good. The car goes further than us again. Right, quick snack, order, off we go. So we're now over in Essex, 12.30 in the afternoon. Look at that, a Cooper Bourne. So just picking that up, there'll be some videos on that soon, no doubt. So. Uh, if you want to see more about a Cooper Bourne, stay subscribed. Uh, what have we done so far though? Uh, yeah, 12.30 in the afternoon, 137 miles since last charge, but still got 58%. Pretty efficient look, 220 watt hours per mile, so uh, kind of four and a half watt hour, uh, miles per kilowatt hour, that's the one. Anyway, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I've covered over 160 miles so far. So it's over 320 miles, so full charge by the look of it. 225 watts per mile, so four and a half miles per kilowatt hours on average, and that's mostly at 70 miles an hour like this. Had a little bit around town, had a passenger in the car as well, so it's not like it's just me. Um, we both had our McDonald's, so a bit heavier after that as well. Yeah, it's looking very good, a little bit of extra range. So does it have soft suspension or not? I wouldn't like to promise it does, but it's a comfortable car. It's great to be in, get it on autopilot like this on a long journey. It's quiet, double glazing of course. Yeah, it's just nice. Nothing else seems to have changed in here. One thing I did notice with this one though, is I do have the Ryzen chip by the look of it. Let's just double check that. Uh, that's heat pump, full self drive computer. Yeah, it's got a Ryzen chip, so it'd be a bit quicker than Oh, the one. If you look at the mapping and responsiveness here, it is all super quick. Other than that, everything else seems the same with this 2022 car compared to earlier cars, if I'm honest. But it's very nice. Even though it's quite big bumps there, as you see, it didn't really crash through the cabin, did it? it I don't know how to, you know, I could be giving false promises here, but I've got a feeling it is either slightly softened up or they slightly improved kind of the insulation from the suspension to the cabin. It doesn't crash through the cabin quite as much, but yeah, hard to say on that one. Dirt out, but it's comfortable, it's great, brilliant. What a brilliant car, what amazing range for the money. Uh, it, the only other cars that realistically do over 300 miles that I've had and driven have been the Mercedes EQS, when we drove that, there's another video on the Mercedes EQS, and a Tesla Model S long range. And this really isn't far off them. So the price may have gone up with Tesla recently, but for the distance it can cover, the sheer ease of the supercharger network, the speed at which it can recharge, the efficiency, it is a remarkable car, a remarkable car. And they're just great. If you've got one of these being delivered to you soon, I think you're gonna love it. 
because they're just fantastic. So I'm back across the southwestern side of London now, and this is Chessington. And this is my old school. It used to be called Chessington Community College, and it looked nothing like that at the time. It was, it's been completely bulldozed and rebuilt by the look of it. Now just called Chessington School, or Chesterton, as it should be if you're from South London. Collection point of the day, and covered 190 miles so far. Still 43% left, so that's about 100 miles back from here. No need to charge or anything like that. 220 watt hours per mile, and this one will be with two passengers. So, collecting my cousin Kate and my aunt is just over there. Uh, so, this will be with a couple of passengers and some luggage in the car because it's my relatives coming to stay for a weekend. So, we'll see if that affects efficiency. I don't think it really will, but um, just so you know, again, it's not just efficiency numbers and range with just me in the car, it is uh, loaded up as well. Got Mackie D's, love. Do you remember my cousin Kate, that girl off YouTube? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> remember seeing the track day video on Thrax? You haven't watched that, then check that video oh, out. God. Caitlin, so here we are back at base, and what's the conclusion, and how many miles can this new Model 3 long range do? Uh, so on that day I covered 293 miles in the end and I still arrived back with 10% of the battery left. So I didn't need to charge at all covering the 300 miles. And in fact, you know, it, that extra little bit of battery capacity and an extra little bit of range um, it was useful to me on that day because with our older Model 3 long range, I would have stopped to charge. Um, I mean, this charge was on the way, it would not have been an inconvenience, it would have been for a couple of minutes, so not a bother at all. But actually, with that distance, this one covered it quite comfortably and easily. Um, efficient as well, so 244 watt hours per mile, used 66 kilowatt hours, so uh, that's four and a half miles per kilowatt hour. And if I went from 100% to 0%, that would have been 325 miles of range, which is pretty good, isn't it? There's not that many cars in the real world that do over 300 quite comfortably. Loaded up, you know, driving at speed limits and everything. So I'm impressed by that. Those are good figures for uh, this car. Remember, there's a little bit of extra in there as well. So push comes to shove, I'm sure I could make this car do over 350 miles. Uh, and in fact, even further, if we really tried and you hyper mile a little bit. Uh, what would that have cost uh, for that, that day there? So even if you charge at the highest domestic rate at the moment, at 28 pence per kilowatt hour, uh, you use 66, you'd work out to just over 18 pounds worth of cost for that 300 mile day. And then of course, it would just plug in overnight, charge overnight, and it could do all the same again tomorrow without having to stop at petrol stations and such like. So um, at the highest rate, even a very modest amount of eight, just over 18 pounds. Uh, if you have cheaper overnight tariffs, it would have been even less, it could be a quarter of that. It could be under five pounds to do that if you can get, or oh, you're still on and a cheaper kind of electric car overnight charging tariff. So uh, impressive car, the Model 3 long range there. Uh, very comfortable to be in all day. Uh, any other differences with the car? Well, I think the ride, I'm a bit on the fence about the ride quality. I think there could be an improvement, but I'm not gonna bet on that because I say I'm used to the one with the slightly bigger wheels. But even then, there was certain bumps and isolation from, the insula uh, isolation from the suspension noises. It just didn't come through the cabin as much. So I'm not going to bet on it, but maybe it is just softened off a little bit. One of my colleagues drove it, and he thinks it is a little bit softer. Uh, but we're a little bit on the fence, and we'll see if we can do some other comparisons and make another video to test this a bit more accurately separately. This one was more about real-world range for this car. Um, but fantastic vehicle here, over 300 miles, quite happily. So the new Model 3 long range uh, gets a big thumbs up from us. A brilliant all-rounder. If you've got one of these coming to you and you're waiting for it eagerly, watching these videos, I think you're absolutely going to love it. So um, we love this car. In fact, we may keep this one on fleet uh, for a little bit and uh, uh, we'll see it in some more comparison videos and such like in the future probably if that happens. So uh, for me, for now, thank you for watching. I hope it's been useful. Don't forget to, uh, forget to hit the little like button below. Leave a little comment. Make sure you're subscribed with the bell icon for notifications. And don't forget to follow us on all the other social media platforms as well. So that's it from me. See you on the next one.